Thank you. Is my microphone on? Can everyone hear me? Yep. All right, great. <coughs> so did anyone manage to grab a rep during lunch today? Because those were impossible. To, you, you did get one. The, no one else put up their hands, so you're the only one here that got a rep. So if you didn't get a rep, you can, you can go heckle him. Uh, oh, no, your talk was already uh, done. Never mind. Um, no, I hope you all had a good lunch. So the presentation is called Symphony is Rad. And it's not like the rad as in the server dude. It's, uh, it's rapid application development we're going to be talking about today. Um, I'm curious, who here has never touched Symphony before? OK, one person. Two people. No, she's, she's pointing out directions. Never mind. Uh, OK, so who is working with Symphony right now, as in, in their current project? That's the majority of the group here. Who hasn't touched it in a few years? All right, it's a few people. So this talk is applicable for everyone. I'm convinced you're going to be walking away from this talk having learned at least one new thing. Um, my own story is that I started using Symfony a couple years ago. And when you start, you sort of get into this groove. You'd sort of learn this structure of how you want to approach these Symfony projects. But the, the, the tricky part about that is that the landscape is changing. Symfony is continuously developing. And um, you don't always sort of go back and, and sort of relearn certain things and be like, oh, actually, they, they built this, so this is easier now. So I really want to um, uh, take you on this little, little journey here. We're going to be building a simple application, and then we're going to see all the new things that were added recently. And I want to explain a little bit about the Symfony UX initiative. So first of all, I'm going to need your help. Because we have two characters, and I need a name for these characters. So does anyone know a good name for Mr. Businessman over here? George. George, excellent. All right, so we have George on the left-hand side. What's your developer going to be called? <laughs> Someone who isn't Dutch, please. <laughs> Trevor. All right, George and Trevor. God, I hope I remember these names. Uh, <laughs> all right, so George, a businessman. He's seen what happened to Twitter recently. For how much was Twitter bought again by Elon? Sorry? 40 billion? 40 billion? 40, 40, okay. Well, I can't, I can't even fathom it at least more than I make uh, a month. Um, <laughs> so George is like, that's quite a lot of money. Uh, I kind of want some of that money. So I'm going to think of an idea, and I'm going to try to set it as well. So George comes up to our developer, Trevor, um, and he's like, I want to build this new platform. And the name of the platform is Chuckler. Now bear in mind, this is an example. <laughs> um, and I kind of already regret the name. Uh, so the point of Chuckler, and you can see there are two dots on the U. It's not exactly an umlaut. Uh, it's more as in now it's a smiley face. It's supposed to be funny. Uh, you don't have to laugh. It's fine. Um, we'll have a few features. So we can register. We can log in. We can post a chuckle. <laughs> this is where it gets worse. Uh, so a, a chuckle is basically a joke you can post. It's like a little post you can do. It's like a tweet, but then it's a chuckle because it's funny. Uh, and we're hip. Uh, you can see a list of chuckles, and it gets worse here. Uh, you can give a chuckle a giggle, which is a like. <laughs> hey, Mastodon is using toots and everything. I think that's worse, okay? We're, we're, we're doing all right here. We're doing all right. And you can see the amount of giggles <laughs> per chuckle. Oh, I regret this so much. Um, so Trevor's like, all right, so you want to build this quickly. Um, but you don't want to spend too much budget on it. You want to see if the idea works. You want to sort of prove it. Um, and if it does take off, we need to be able to sort of scale this app appropriately. Make sure we don't have to rewrite the entire code base. And uh, we should sort of just be able to continue on from what we built. So let's go ahead and apply rapid application development. Now, you can use rapid application development to build a proof of concept. 
you can uh, use it to quickly reach an MVP. Uh, and you can use it to just make sure you focus on what is important. So rapidly build everything around it and then focus on the domain, on the actual problem. Now in my mind, rapid application development can be split into three sort of sections. We have the process, Scrum, Kanban, and every other supporting process around it. We have the mindset, and we have the code. Now during this talk, I'm not gonna be talking about the process. Different talk. I will be talking about mindset and code. So for the mindset, it's important to sort of loosen up. Who here considers himself themselves to be a puristic developer? So someone who's sort of wants, think, wants to build things a certain way, who's very principled about thir certain things. See one hand going up, two, three, maybe. Who, who here considers themselves a, a pragma pragmatic developer? Most people, okay. Well, in that case, you're in the right mindset because uh, it's important to be pragmatic when you wanna do this rapid application development practice. You cannot hold on to all the things, uh, you cannot hold on to all the, the certain structures that you wish to use that you think are perfect because usually when you do that, you're sort of fighting the system a little bit. You have to create all these different architectural, or you have to implement all these different architectural patterns to achieve what you want to achieve to make it all beautifully coded, but that's not exactly what you want to achieve. You want to make sure that George, <laughs> uh, you want to make sure that George can actually launch uh, their product. Make sure you have a clear set of goals. I think one of the most important things you want to prevent is scope creep. Very, very dangerous. Uh, so make sure you have clear goals, uh, what you want to achieve, and adjust your definition of done. Maybe, okay, don't shoot me, maybe testing is not right for this project. Is James here? No, okay, I've, we're good, I hope. Uh, <laughs> all right, so we got the mindset done. Let's move on to code. Now, I call it agile code. Some people would just say extreme programming, but Code in a way that embraces change. Make sure that what you're coding can be changed easily and you don't have to restructure the entire thing. Um, and if you're doing, if you're creating some technical depth, if you're creating something that's maybe overly complex or like a little bit dirty in a sense, make sure it's, it's put into one place so you can easily replace it later on when this, when this website starts to get millions of visitors. And code generation. And this is something we're gonna be zooming in on a little bit more. Something I've been very allergic to in the past because I guess I am a pretty puristic developer. I like to do things a certain way. So code generation definitely goes against the grain a little bit for me. Um, but I did notice that there have been a lot of improvements lately. And definitely with PHP 7, PHP 8, uh, property type hints and all this fancy stuff um, helps a lot. So what do we need? We need to have PHP installed on our laptop, computer, or mobile device. I guess you could program on a mobile device. Uh, we need Docker. We need the Symfony CLI. And we need, well, we don't necessarily need it, but I prefer it, NVM, which is a Node version manager. It's a really easy way to install different versions of Node. Um, I'm sort of stepping off of my opinion where I think everything should be in your Docker file, everything should be in Docker containers, nothing should run on your laptop. Um, that doesn't quite help in this instance. Um, it, it'll be a lot easier going with what Symfony CLI will do for you, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you later what I mean. So, let's do our setup first. So we're gonna tell the Symfony CLI to create a new web application for us. We'll name it Chuckler, and it's gonna do it all its composer, create project things, and then we'll have a brand new web application ready to go. And this is what you'll end up with. So it's a very simple, straightforward Symfony installation. Now, this is nothing new for most people here, I assume. Um, now Symfony has a built-in server and it, has, uh, it uses Docker Compose. It uses Docker Compose for the database and for a uh, mail catcher. Um, Mailcatcher is uh, an application you can use to sort of trap all the email that's being sent on localhost. That way you don't have to mess with any SMTP service. You can just go to an interface and see exactly what mail is being sent. 
uh, it's a really nice way for development and even for acceptance, it could definitely be considered uh, as well. Um, so what we've done here is we've done a Docker Compose up to start our Docker containers, which is database and mailer. Then we said a Symfony server start to start our Symfony web server, which is all just running on, on PHP. And we use Symfony open local to actually open the website. And then we'll see this. So this is your default Symfony project uh, welcome page. And this is what we'll have in our composer.json. So you'll see it, it leans on PHP 8.1. We'll have Doctrine installed, Doctrine migrations, Doctrine ORM, PHP stand, PHP doc parser, uh, the Sensio framework extra bundle, a bunch of Symfony packages, and way more than you need, by the way. But again, mindset, not important. We don't really care. We just want to get this project uh, going. Symfony mailer, notifier, Trick bundle, you can remove them if you if you really feel like it, if it's really necessary. Uh, and a bunch of other just default things in your composer JSON. Excuse me. Um, we also have Symphony Messenger. And Symphony Messenger is a way to um, well, for one, it's a way to asynchronously handle certain uh, certain jobs. So you can create a message which has some information in it, then you give it to the message handler, to the, to the, to the bus, um, and then the, the bus is gonna uh, use a, a transport, uh, which can be asynchronous or it can be synchronous, um, and it's gonna be handled asynchronously uh, by a consumer. But in order to set this up, we'll have to tell Symfony Messenger to set up its transport. So we say Symfony Console Messenger set up transport, it'll create the async transport and a fill transport. Uh, then we start the consumer, and now it's just going to consume whatever message is being put on the bus. Symfony feels a little bit like magic, as in the Symfony CLI. When we do Docker Compose up, our database and our mailer is actually being booted with random ports. But then how does our Symfony application know what those ports are? How can it connect to those things? Well, um, Symfony CLI sort of takes care of this part. So it actually uh, looks up all these different ports, and if we do Symfony um, uh, uh, far export, we'll see all the environment variables that Symfony has generated based on your project, based on whatever is running. And you can see a few things in there. Uh, you can see the database, uh, let's see here. Um, there you go. The mailer web URL, for example, 32783, that's a randomly generated port by Docker Compose. So there will, no, there will be no port conflicts when you're doing it this way. There's also a run command, and this one is also gonna be very useful. Uh, the run command can run a random command, but it can run it as a daemon, and it can also add a watcher to it. And this is gonna be very useful for us, for our consumer. So if we now do symphony run minus D to demonize it, then we do dash dash watch, we say config, source, templates, and vendor. These are the different folders that we want to be watching. So every time I now change my code, it'll automatically restart the consumer. Because how many times have you run into the issue where you're changing some code and then you're just testing it, testing it and you're like, what's going, what's going wrong here? Why is it not working? And then you realize, oh, I forgot to restart my consumer. It's still leaning on the wrong code. So uh, doing it this way makes it a lot easier. Now we have Symfony server status, so we can see what exactly is running, and we'll also see that our different things that we started with the run, run command also show up there. So it's being managed by this CLI. Now we can also see all the logs. We can just basically tell all the logs, and these also include the logs from the consumer. So you have everything in one, uh, one terminal. In order to simplify, simpl uh, simplify these things a little bit more, um, we can create a makefile. I personally use makefiles because I think they're easy, but use whatever runner or whatever aliases you want. You can use a bash alias uh, if you want. Um, but I made it so that if you do make up, it'll do a symphony server stop just to make sure everything is down. We have sort of a clean start. Docker compose up minus D. So we start Docker compose in the background. Um, we'll make sure the transports are set up um, we'll run our consumer, and then we'll start Symfony server log. 
So now we have a really easy way to start a project that we didn't do anything special for it. We didn't have to configure anything. Everything was generated for us. Now let's talk about the Maker Bundle. So the Maker Bundle in Symfony has a bunch of code generation commands that we can utilize. And this is the entire list on the default installation. So you can see it has make off, you can create a controller, a CRUD, uh, an entity, fixtures, form, uh, a message. You can generate a whole bunch of things um, uh, which can really help you sort of accelerate the process of actually trying to deliver value. So let's build a login, one of our first features, being able to log in and register. So we can say Symfony Console make user. Now it's going to make a user class for us. It's asking if, us if we want to store user data in the, in the database. That's all fine. And now it's generated the entity for us and it's edited the security.yaml with the right configuration. Now we can go ahead and do make auth, which is going to create an authenticator for us. This is going to be the login form. We pick login form authenticator, we give it a name, and it will generate all the necessary files for us. I'm not typing, by the way. This is my brain just. Uh okay. Now we're generating a registration form. It's going to create a template for us. It's, it's asking us, uh, do you want to add the unique entity constraint to make sure we're not adding multiple users with the same email? Um, do you want to use email verification? Um, what kind of email address do you want to send email from? It's a bunch of different questions, which uh, otherwise you would have to uh, write the code yourself. Now it's created all these things, it created these entities. Now we've got to make sure uh, that we're also creating the uh, migrations for it. Um, also, when it asks the questions, do you want to verify the email address, it said, that's fine, we can do that, but make sure you install this verify email bundle. So we're doing that now. We're just following the instructions that are output by the make commands. Also introducing a reset password, so you can do you know, I forgot my password, and there'll be an entire flow. You'll get an, a link with a, a hash in it to reset your password. All these things that are pretty trivial that almost every app needs. There you go. I did a compose require. Now I can actually generate the reset password code. That domain is mine, by the way. If you want to buy it, it's uh, 43 billion. 44, <laughs> so, one billion. I can, I can, uh, I can, uh, I can do without the one billion. It's fine. Uh, so we're now we're generating our migration files, um, and we're going to execute the migration. Now I'm a bit lazy here. I type Symfony console migrate, and then Symfony's like, oh, did you mean doctrine migration migrator migrate whatever? I'm like yes, I meant that. Um, so um, what just happened? We did a whole bunch of stuff. We executed a bunch of commands. What exactly changed? So if you do a git status. Uh, on, uh, in a directory, you will see that there's a change composer JSON, of course, because we did a composer require. Bundles were added, reset password was introduced. Uh, we got some controllers, a registration controller, reset password controller, a security controller handling the login. We got our user entity. Uh, a bunch of things were introduced, a bunch of forms, and a bunch of templates. So let's have a look. What does exactly, what does this look like? That's, oh, spoiler, no, don't look. Uh, okay. That's a readable, right? Oh, I can make it a little bit bigger. So, I run my make up command. Luckily, I don't have to pull in any Docker images because that would take a while. Uh, I'm running my server now. So now I'm gonna type symphony open local. So this is our uh, welcome page, and if we go to slash login, we'll see that we have a login form. It looks absolutely ugly, that's okay. We'll fix that later. We also have a registration form. So let's go ahead and register. Uh, Trevor is our name. Uh, of course, we own the domain name chuckler.com. This is not really, I'll make it bigger. Uh, our password is hunter1, agree terms, register. Ooh, a beautiful error. Okay, so what happened here is we never uh, ran our migrations. This should be a lesson for everyone. 
don't do live demos. They're never a good idea. I don't know why I thought it was a good idea. There we go. Let's try that again. Okay, so this is expected. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> so when it generates this, uh, this app authenticator, um, it leaves the to-do for you to actually make sure you're redirected to a certain page after you register. Um, now on the bottom here, we'll have our Symphony toolbar, which tells us a bunch of stuff. And if we go to our server bit here, you can see it actually sees, all right, we're running in Docker Compose. Uh, our environment variables come from Docker. Uh, we also have a webmail. So when I open that, I'll see the email sent after registration, which says, please confirm your email. Now, uh, well, I can open it. There you go. Confirm my email. And then it redirects me to the registration page. Uh, but you can see I'm now logged in as Trevor. So that's great. We have our first feature build in no time. There we go. Register and login. Nailed it. I said nailed it. All right, now let's actually introduce this concept of chuckles. So, <laughs> chuckles. Uh, okay, so we're going to be telling Symphony to go ahead and make an entity for us. It's going to ask us, what do you want to call this entity? So we say it's a chuckle, because domain-driven design, got to make sure that we actually call it a chuckle in our code as well, um, even though just message would have been nicer. Um, now you can see it already generated uh, the chuckle entity, and it generated the chuckle repository for us. Now it's going to ask us what properties do you want to put in it. So let's add message to it. Um, well, what's the field type? Well, it's, it's text because it's multiple multiple lines. Um, can the field be null? Uh, nope, that would be strange. Another property uh, we want to add the author. So who wrote the actual chuckle? Uh, field type. Um, it's a many to one relationship. Uh, we want to relate it to user. Uh, can it be nullable? No, that would definitely be weird if a chuckle wouldn't have an author, so let's say no. Do you want to add a new property to users so that you can actually update chuckle objects from it? Uh, no, this is not necessary for us right now. All right, one last one is uh, created at. We want to make sure we know when this chuckle was written. It's, oh, it already recognized the fact that it's uh, daytime. I'm acting surprised. I know this happens. Uh, it already recognized that it's uh, daytime immutable. Uh, so we say, that's fine. Uh, can this field be null? Um, no, that would also be weird. Uh, and we're done. All right, great. So we have our uh, chuckle entity. Now let's go ahead and make sure you can actually post chuckles. So let's go ahead, uh, console make crud. We're going to have Symfony generate the whole CRUD structure for us. So we say it's for the Chuckle entity. Uh, yeah, Chuckle controller sounds, sounds good to me. T no, no test. No, thank you. Uh, <laughs> there we go. So it generated a bunch of uh, templates for us, and it generated the controller for us. Um, now we have, uh, we created a new, we generated a new entity. We've got to make sure we also create our migrations. So we say, make migration, and then we say, the lazy way, migrate. Okay, let's see what happened. Let's see if this works. I'm fully confident this is working. Excellent. So, we have our new controller, and I'll show you in just a bit. Uh, and if I go to slash chuckle, I now have this beautiful template where I can create these different types of messages. Now, it's giving me an error. Again, expected. I'm a professional. Um, if we go into our code here, we can see we have a new controller. This is a chuckle controller. Um, there's a route here, so it's on slash chuckle. Uh, this is our index. It's going to give us a list of all the chuckles. I'm getting tired saying chuckle. Uh, all the chuckles available in the system. We can create a new one, um, which uses the form that it also generated. Uh, it also has uh, edit and delete. Now, if I go to my chuckle type here, we can see that it's adding created add and author as one of the options. We don't really need to deal with, with any of that um, because the author is already defined by the user currently logged in, and created add is something that we're just going to generate ourselves. Uh, so I can just remove those, go to my entity, and make sure we can we can. Uh, make sure we, uh, we, we specify these. So, uh, 
it's a constructor, let's accept the user there, and we say, I can already hear, BIM, BIM is uh, very much into domain-driven design, and uh, the fact that I'm now calling a user and I'm signing as the author, that this is a big mistake. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm in, uh, in dangerous territory here, but I'm just gonna choose to ignore him, as I usually do. Uh, <laughs> There we go, now we go to our controller, make sure that we're adding, we're, we're adding the user here, we're logged in user, let's see what happens here. All right, we have our form, we can actually write a message now. Um, so let's say uh, foobar, because why not? We do save, and we have our new chuckle. All right, pretty quick, we're getting there. So we can post a chuckle and see a list of chuckles. Now, this is very, very, very MVP. <laughs> if you were to present this to uh, Mr. George, uh, he would probably not be happy. So um, it works, sure it works. Uh, but let's actually go from MVP to MLP. So the term MLP, if you're not familiar with it, is minimum lovable product. And this is what makes something that just works to something that actually nice to use, that people actually get excited about. Uh, so MVP, it works. Uh, MLP, it's pretty and nice. So pretty, it looks good, and nice, it's nice to use. Now, as you've noticed, Symphony isn't pretty. <laughs> uh, and Symphony is not gonna do anything for you on that part. You have to do that yourself. You're on your own. So uh, what we can do is we can install Symphony Encore. And Symphony Encore, uh, who knows how Webpack works? Don't put your hand up, you don't know how it works. All those load, you don't tell me you know all those loaders, and you, you don't tell me you can write it from scratch. That's, I don't believe you, I don't believe you. And, and if, if that's the case, you can show me after. Uh, so Symphony Encore sort of simplifies that part of it. Um, it'll, uh, it's basically sort of a wrapper around uh, Webpack, allowing you to just use simple sort of functions to enable things like uh, SASS support. Um, so I've gone ahead and installed Symphony Encore. Um, I've did my, I've done my npm install, uh, and I'm now running the dev server. Again, a little bit of magic. As soon as you run this dev server, Symfony is gonna know, um, okay, it runs on this port, and it's gonna use that for all its assets. So now the assets are being routed through this dev server. Um, that way you'll get uh, fun things like hot reload. So if you wanna enable SCSS, I can go ahead and change my webpack.config.js. I can enable the SES loader. Uh, I'm gonna run the, the uh, dev server and it's gonna tell me, hey, you're missing a package, so I go, I'll go ahead and install those. Uh, and after that, I'll have full SCSS support. I don't know why I'm typing. I, I should just copy the entire rule and, and instead of typing it, but whatever. Pass trick is not so smart. There you go. We also gotta make sure that we're enabling the bootstrap form theme, because we installed bootstrap, and the form thing is gonna take care of some of the, the rendering things for us. So when you use your Twig helper to render the form, it's gonna make sure that it's using um, a bootstrap classes. I've gotta expand my make file a little bit, because we now have this dev server that we're running um, uh, uh, to, to generate our, our SCSS files. Uh, and stuff like that. So I've added Symphony Run, it's right over there, Symphony Run minus D, MPX Encore Dev Server, and there you go. I can also add Live Reload by adding these four uh, lines of code. Uh, so every time something changes in my templates directory, the page will automatically refresh, which is, again, helping us achieve this sort of rapid application development sort of vibe that we want to get into. All right, let's go ahead and make this pretty. Now, if you thought I was gonna live code all this, you're very naive. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's just restore. Clean, what's the fast way to clean? Just clean, minus everything. Yeah, that looks good. All right, let's switch to demo two. There you go. Let's do make up. Again, expected error, don't worry. I'm using NVM. Okay, so. 
we have the same code in front of us. And uh, instead of me writing out all these templates, I'm just gonna uh, diff two directories and show you what I'm changing. So, yeah, I think everyone can read this. So I made a few changes to make this look pretty. I'm just gonna run you through it really quickly because this is not necessarily the point of this talk, but it's necessary to achieve this MLP product. So I'm gonna make sure the viewport is set up correctly. Um, I'm gonna add this whole container fluid around it just to boot make it all bootstrappy and stuff like that. Uh, add a few links into the menu, you know, check if someone is logged in and then show a logout link. Uh, but that's about it, nothing else really happens here. We go to the next file. Um, so this is our edit chuckle file. Um, so here uh, I'm doing form start form, making sure I have a certain action set. Uh, I'm using uh, prevatar.cc, which is just like sort of, sort of a random placeholder avatar website you can use. Uh, and uh, I'm echoing, or I'm uh, doing form widgets to actually create the, uh, the message input field. Uh, I have a save button and a little footer that shows the created at time. So this is our edit field. I'm just gonna make sure all these changes go to the right. There you go. We go to our next file, our index.html. So this is the, the list of chuckles. Um, I've sort of simplified a little bit. I just have this diff called chuckles and then I'm looping over all of them and I'm including the show template to just uh, make sure it's outputted. There you go, there you go, there you go. The new, so this is uh, where you create a new chuckle. Uh, also some random bootstrapping stuff, not really important and I'll show you what it looks like in just a second. Here we have our, uh, our show, which is just outputting the chuckle in a certain format to make it look nice. And then we have our registration, which also added some bootstrap things to it. There you go. Here. Login. Same stuff. Just bootstrapping it up. You don't need CSR tokens. There you go. Okay. Now we also have a few changes in our controller. Well, actually, just one. Uh, we're gonna make sure that it runs on the root, so we don't wanna go to slash chuckle, it should just be the home page. So we're gonna get rid of this, uh, this root annotation, or attribute, I should say. Um, we wanna be able to have people create a chuckle on the home page, so we gotta make sure we create this form uh, and have it available to us in the index.html.twig template. Um, now I have to prepend all the other actions with slash chuckle because I don't want slash new to be the endpoint to create a new chuckle. I think that's a bit dirty. Uh, so I'm just pre prefixing these things. Uh, oh yeah, uh, the maker bundle uh, generates these, these controllers and it uses render form, which is a deprecated method. So it doesn't really matter, but you can just change it to render, uh, which does a lot more magic now. Et voila. Okay, so let's see where we're at right now. Let's go to the home page and watch it crash. Also, very much part of it. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, I, I know, I know, I know. This is expected. <laughs> it's all part of it. I, was, I just forgot one directory. Of course, we have CSS. You know, I'm a backend developer. I don't really care about CSS, but apparently, it's necessary to get things going. So, uh, yeah, the one thing we need to know here is uh, I wrote a bit of CSS. So this is it. That's all. I didn't do anything else. So let's make sure that we're actually using that. That, that was scary for a little bit. Uh, I also have a nice font that I use, uh, which is called O Will. I don't know. I don't know why, but uh, sure. There you go, I already live reloaded it. So this is our application, it's a bit zoomed in. This is our application. So it looks all right, right? It looks pretty good. Uh, that's not convincing at all, but that's okay. Uh, so we can actually, put, okay, who knows a joke? Any a programmer joke? Give me a quick joke. Anyone? What's, oh God, what's a wind? 
Turbine's favorite. Oh God, my spelling kind of music. Oh wait, we're in. Uh, sorry, we're in Britain land. Let's do it like this. Wind turbines. All right. What's the answer? The lack of laughs is enough. For <laughs> Thank you for uh, for offering <laughs> offering this terrible joke. We like terrible jokes. There's going to be a few more. There you go. It works. I posted a chuckle. How great is this? Um, now we could we could make it a little bit more logical because you know it should be reversed order. So you want this one to be up top. Um, so we'll just quickly change that to uh, make sure that happens. So in our index we have a chuckle repository finds all here. Let's just change it to get timeline, and we're gonna create this method in our repository, and then we'll just use the beauty of doctrine to get this going. So we'll do an order by, uh, c.createdAd, descending, get query, get results, and uh, yeah, that works. Cool, okay. So it's pretty now, but is it nice? Are people are gonna are people gonna love this? I don't I don't think just yet. Uh, definitely not with my design skills. Um, but Symphony can help us a little bit here. Um, so um, part of the Symphony ecosystem, and again, the reason I'm I'm saying this so much, uh, Symphony, 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 we're trying to stay in 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 the expected lane here. We're trying to embrace the ecosystem. We're not trying to fight. And we're not trying to use our own tools. So we're going to use what Symphony expects us to use. This is going to help us have this, you know, this, this rapid application development sort of flow. So we can use Stimulus here, and I really, I actually, really like Stimulus. Uh, so Stimulus is a way to organize your JavaScript in uh, in in your Symphony application because JavaScript is sort of necessary to make things nice, to make things feel snappy and and and, and fun to use. Um, so here we, we define our controller, uh, which uh, it has uh, a greet function, which is going to console log uh, whatever you input into the element. So if you look at our HTML here, um, we see we have a diff with data controller hello. Now this tells stimulus to initialize the controller within this element, uh, the hello controller. So what we see above there is the hello controller. Then we can specify targets. So we can say, oh yeah, this input field is a thing within my controller. This is something I can reference. So we have data hello, hello is the name of the controller, target is name, the name is the name of the target. Then we have a button which has data action, where we say, okay, on the click event, in my hello controller, I wanna call the greet function. So as soon as we click this greet button, it's gonna run the function and it's gonna console log whatever I put into that input field. But this is great, in my opinion. There are no unexpected click handlers. The amount of times I've been going through scripts.js or main.js or whatever PHTML file there is, trying to figure out where this damn click handler is for this one link somewhere on the page uh, is really annoying, and I know the Chrome DevTools can definitely help you out with that. Uh, but this way, we're just defining it in our HTML uh, in a way that's not annoying and it's immediately visible. So that's quite nice, actually. Um, it handles dynamically changing HTML. So if you were to generate some sort of HTML uh, where you try to initialize a controller, Stimulus will see that and will initialize the controller for you. So it's very, very responsive. It helps you organize your JavaScript code and it stays in its lane. It doesn't do anything more than this. This is it. It's just helping you create components of your JavaScript. And I like this. And this is sort of a foundation for something a lot bigger, which is the Symphony UX initiative. So this is a set of libraries that Symphony has adopted to work really well with Symphony. They created uh, bridges where necessary and made it so that it's really easy to implement. And this is gonna help us make it nice. So these are all the current tools out there. Um, I encourage you to go look this up, go to ux.symphony.com and you'll see a whole page with all these components explained. You can click them and see what they do. But today we're gonna uh, zoom in a little bit into Turbo to see what this means for our application. Now, Turbo is actually Hotwire Turbo and Hotwire Turbo comes from the Rails community. Um, and uh, so it's been around for a little bit longer than when Symphony introduced it, um, a lot longer. 
so Turbo is split into three different sort of components. We have Turbo Drive, Turbo Frames, and Turbo Streams. We're going to look at all of them separately, and we're going to implement them. I'll, I'll just skip to the final so you can see it. Uh, uh, implement them into our application. So Turbo Drive actually takes care of navigation. So every link that you click now, or every every form that you post, instead of doing the actual navigation, uh, full page navigation, it's going to do an AJAX request. It's going to get a response, and it's going to replace the page with the response from that AJAX request. This already creates a nice sort of single page application uh, feel without having to actually build a single page application or deal with its complexities. Um, so that's already very nice. How do we install Turbo? Uh, we do our Composer Require Symphony slash UX Turbo. It's going to make sure that it installs any necessary NPM, well, it's going to uh, add any necessary NPM packages to our package.json. So we just have to do NPM install force, and it's going to do this for us. And now we have uh, Turbo Drive. Uh, and I'll show you what exactly what it looks like uh, in a bit. Uh, another thing you can do with Turbo is you can specify what kind of me method it should use when you click on this link. So a delete link, all of a sudden, you don't need this form around the delete button, which does a post to some endpoint. Even though you don't really want to post, you want to delete, because that's, that's an official HTTP method, so why can't I use it? Um, so you can specify data turbo methods to say, all right, I want, as soon as I click this link, I want you to do a delete request to this URL, and Turbo will take care of it. So, you be the judge. Let me go ahead and go, oh, well, let me just restore everything. In the meantime, you can think of more funny jokes to post. Uh, yeah, sorry, there we go. Okay, get the switch. Demo. Typo. I heard I heard someone be like, "Oh, I think you made a typo." Thank you for that noise. Helpful noise. All right, so let's go to our application. Don't do this to me. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> um, let me just open the dev tool so you can actually see it. And I can zoom this in as well. Nice. All right, so uh, I'm going to show you. Um, I'll filter by doc. So if there's an actual full page, uh, if there's actual full page navigation going on, you'll see something pop up here. Um, so. I log in, you see nothing happens. If I switch to the Ajax tab, you can see it requested the login page and it's just replacing the page content. So there's also no flash of unstyled content, which is pretty nice. Um, so let me just log in as Trevor at chuckler.com, hunter1. We still have our login redirect, but that's fine. Um, and now let's post something new. So anyone know a new joke? Hey, nice. All right, thanks. I was expecting that one to come up. Uh, uh, I know a joke about UDP, but you might not get it. I hope you feel proud going home. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to save my password. Go away. Um, I'm posting this new, uh, this, this, uh, this new joke, and it's, it's all j doing it uh, through Ajax. So there's no page refresh going on. So it already starts to feel a little bit more snappy. Now let's continue. Let's continue with uh, Turbo Frames. So Turbo Frames um, helps you to decompose uh, uh, these pages into separate frames, so you can navigate them separately. And uh, this sounds very simple, but it's actually really powerful once you realize what you can do with it. So this is what it looks like. It's just an HTML tag. We say Turbo Frame. We give it an, a unique identifier. Uh, so in this case, we're going to Turbo Frame all of our separate chuckles that we have. Um, so imagine the content of the chuckle and all the HTML is within this turbo frame. Um, and we can do a bunch more stuff with it. So we can, uh, for example, do uh, eager loading, uh, where we say, all right, this is turbo frame. This is where you're supposed to fetch the content from. But in the meantime, while that is loading, just show this, this little spinner animation, right? 
uh, or I want you to do lazy loading. So once it scrolls into view, then I want you to load this URL. Um, and also, when we do navigation, if I click on a certain link, I want you to navigate a, sp a, a specific frame to this URL. So it starts to become a lot more dynamic what you can do with your interface without having written a single line of JavaScript. And as mostly backend developers, I guess we love this. Uh, so that's good. Um, so let's implement these frames. I did the same thing again. There you go. So. Um, <laughs> no, we're good. This is still planned. So we go to demo four, turbo frames. There you go. So, uh, okay. Now, instead of extending the base template here and rendering the entire page, including navigation, every time you visit this uh, uh, this particular, every time you visit the edit form, um, I can improve performance a little bit by cutting all that out. Because now we're loading things through Ajax and it's only gonna replace the turbo frame from the response with the turbo frame on the page. So we don't need everything around it. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of that and make sure there's a turbo frame with the appropriate ID. Uh, now for my show, I'm gonna make sure that there's the same ID, ID visible. There you go. Now if we go ahead and view our application, let me just do a hard refresh to make sure, we've achieved this effect. So now our edit link is doing a request to the edit page. The edit page is returning a turbo frame with basically the same format, the same setup, the same look and feel, but with a, a form inside of it. And it just replays that on the page. So all of a sudden, our application is starting to feel quite nice. It's starting to work like a single page application. Again, having not written any JavaScript. Uh, no joke, but uh, let's see. Uh, uh, do we know any other fun jokes? No, okay, that's fine. Let me just make a dot so you can see that I changed. There you go. I'm butchering all your jokes here. Just make some changes. So this is starting to work really nice. The same with uh, delete. The delete just works. It does uh, a call to the uh, uh, to the endpoint, and it uses the delete methods to properly delete it. Now we can go one step further. So we we'll, sorry. So we also have turbo streams. And turbo streams are sort of there once the turbo frames don't quite cut it anymore. So turbo streams are, again, it's an HTML tag that you can use um, with a certain action. So in this case, we have turbo stream action append. We can append an element to a certain target. Now this target, target chuckles here, this is our diff with our ID chuckles. So that's what it's targeting. And we're saying append this diff to that list. Same with update, we say update, this is the target, chuckle, uh, chuckle one, and then update the content with whatever is here. And we could also remove things. Now you're wondering why do we need this? Because what we had was working quite nicely. Um, so I'm gonna go one step further. Uh, we have a thing called Mercure, which is also part of this Symfony UX, UX Turbo part. And this is gonna help us push all these changes to everyone who's currently on that website. Um, it's an open protocol. Uh, it allows you to, um, it allows clients to listen to an event stream, uh, and then we can publish certain changes made. And we can publish these turbo streams to all those clients. So how do we install Symphony Mercure? We do our composer require Symphony Mercure bundle, and notice how uh, it'll just automatically update the Docker Compose file for us. So once we do Docker Compose up, it'll start this new Mercure server that we need, uh, and that's it. We also have to enable the controller in our uh, JSON file because it's part of this UX Turbo package, so it's de disabled by default. So we enable it, and then we're done. And that'll get you to this final product. 
final. Yeah, yeah. Bless you. That's normal. That's also normal. Uh, yes. Oh boy. Oh no, not like this. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> this is real bad. I have one solution for this. <laughs> Don't do this on production. <laughs> okay, so you'll see in our developer tools that now we have this open connection and we can see that because Chrome actually recognized this as an event stream. So we're connected to the Mercury server and there's now a special little tab that says event stream. We can see all the data coming in. Now for one client, it doesn't really make much sense, but if I go into incognito mode, incognito, sorry, still learning English. Um, now I can go ahead and I'll show you uh, refresh. Well, you can't read that, Never mind. <laughs> so if I post something here, this is a funny joke. Ha ha, send, it's gonna show up on the other side as well because it's reading and you can see it here. I'll just, all right, I'll make this a little bit bigger. You can see here that it published this turbo stream content uh, uh, data to all the clients connected to this uh, particular topic. Uh, so just to be able to visualize it a bit better, uh, HTML. There, this is what it published to everyone. So it says, all right, Turbo Stream prepend to the Chuckles div. Here is the entire Turbo Frame with all the uh, HTML needed. Um, and now we have this uh, nicely responsive. Did I close? I didn't close it. Uh, and the same way, the same thing works for the Chuckles that were the giggles that we introduced. So I can. Uh, give something a like, let's just call it a like, <laughs> and you can see the counter on the right changing as well. So with writing zero JavaScript, the only thing I did was did compose your require, and I did a few things to my trick template, and that's it, we've achieved this result. Now imagine actually getting a decent designer <laughs> and actually making this pretty. You can achieve uh, great things with this rep deprecation development methodology within Silverstripe. Silverstripe Symphony, my bad. We use Silverstrap as a CMS, so I'm confused. So now George is very happy. Trevor delivered excellent work, and look how happy George is. He's on his little laptop laying on the floor. He's texting all his friends, look at this new application I just, bought, I just created. I'm gonna be a billionaire. So what exactly have we learned? So I want you to embrace the mindset of rapid application development. I want you to lead into Symfony Server and the Maker Bundle to accelerate your, your development process. Uh, use Symfony UX to go from an MVP to an MLP. Uh, Symfony won't, make, won't help you make it pretty. Y that's really something you gotta do yourself. Uh, and if you can't do it yourself, make sure there's someone who can write CSS. Uh, and Turbo is a very powerful tool. What I showed you was just a simple example, but if you start thinking uh, about it more, you can do a lot of crazy complex things with uh, <coughs> just this one tool. Also, we don't have to make, write any JavaScript, so that's quite nice. That's it, thank you. Any questions? No, when you install uh, Turbo, you get giggles. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a feature. No, um, uh, it, it's, uh, it's something that, uh, it's in the final product, but because of time, I didn't want to <laughs> go too far into it. Uh, but I, I will show you uh, what is behind that, uh, just so you get an idea of what exactly was added there. Um, 
It's cool to hear you say giggles though. It's, I don't know, it's starting to feel more like an actual product now. Uh, so in the show template, you'll see that we have another column here with our the amount of giggles. So this is a twig function, but it just pulls the amount of giggles from the database, nothing special. Um, and uh, this is the emoji, which renders beautifully in PHP Storm. And it's basically just a link to uh, a control action with data turbo method posts. So it's gonna post a request, and if we go to our controller, uh, you'll see what that looks like, which is on the bottom here. Uh, it just toggles the giggle, so if you click it again, it removes it, um, and it publishes an update uh, to Mercure. Um, uh, it just renders uh, this template here, uh, and if we open this template, you'll just see the well, the template surely exists. <laughs> okay. Why did it work? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? This is magic. There it is. Wow, okay, that doesn't usually happen. And this is it, so um, it, it posts an update and uh, it updates specifically that little counter, because we gave that an ID, and it just outputs the new amount of chuckles. So that's where I came from. <laughs> Any other questions? No? no. Okay. Uh, okay, cool. Well, thank you very much. Round of applause. <laughs>